So I'm going to introduce Newton's method, the first method that we're going to discuss for root finding. So let me also explain what root finding is. So if I have a function f of x, let me just draw it as a curve. That's not so smooth. That's uh, a little better. Then what root finding is, is the process by which we find where this function crosses zero. Um, so I'm, I'm going to say this is our goal. And what we are doing in most numerical methods is we're starting with a guess and we're coming up with ways to use that guess to come closer to the answer that we're trying to find. So I'm going to start with x sub k, and that is our current guess. Now, we should be able to evaluate the function. So its y value is going to be, I'll just draw the coordinates, x sub k comma f of x sub k. So in numerical methods, we usually know how to calculate things. So let's assume we know how to calculate um, f. And, um, and also, we know how to calculate f prime. So if we know how to calculate f prime, that gives us the slope of the tangent line. So... If the blue line is the tangent line, it has a slope. I'm going to call the slope m. The slope is equal to f prime of x sub k. And notice that we know a point on this line and the slope on this line. Um, and so if we have a point, let's call this um, x k comma y k, then, and we have a slope m, then the equation of that line is going to be y minus y k equals m times x minus x k. And if we're interested in the root, so I'm going to say here, this is xk plus 1. That is the place where the line goes through 0. Then that corresponds to this number being 0, y being 0 for the line. So if we then solve for x, that becomes xk plus 1 and we should have a formula for the next guess. So let's, let's do a little bit of math here. So um, x sub k plus 1 minus x sub k is going to be y sub k over m. And therefore, x sub k plus 1 is going to equal x sub k I'm sorry, there should be a negative sign here minus y sub k over m. And, um, and to use slightly different notation, this is x sub k minus f of x sub k, that's what y sub k was in the beginning, over f prime x sub k. So this is a famous formula for Newton's method. So if you have a guess, x sub k, Newton's method tells you that if you can calculate the function at x sub k and its derivative, then you can get a guess for x sub k plus 1. And the way I've drawn this, x sub k is closer to our goal than x sub k plus 1. Um, so I, I want to make the comment that that is often true, especially if your guess is good. But it's not always true. Um, so let me show you an example of when the next guess according to Newton's formula is actually worse. So let's imagine this is our goal to get here to this root. 
let's say we happen to make this as a guess. Well, if we then draw the tangent line, then our next guess actually ends up here, which is actually further away from the goal than the initial guess. Um, so one thing that's important when using Newton's method is that you don't assume it's going to work. It helps to plot your function and also check to make sure it actually is giving you the right answer. Um, another thing is if you go back to this plot, it's not really drawn to scale, right? We, we don't really have a good feeling for how close this is to our goal and, and how much closer this really is, right? Um, so I would not assume that the tangent line is a very good approximation of the function itself, right? So that, notice what we're doing here. We're, we're taking, so because it's not trivial to solve for the root that we're looking for, we approximate our function by a tangent line and we solve for the root of that approximation. Well, that's not necessarily a good approximation. So one feature that's common to numerical methods is that your approximations are poor and the way we solve that is through iterations. Um, and so, so if we have initial guess x0, we use Newton's formula to get x1. We then can repeat the process, calculate the function at x1, calculate the derivative at x1, and then use this formula to get x2 and so on, right? So we can actually do this, you know, a large number of times. This brings up the question of how do you know when you're actually done? Um, how do you know when you've done enough iterations that you have an accurate answer? So I'm gonna give you a simple method for doing that. It's not necessarily the best or the, the most foolproof method, but this is a simple way. So I'm, gonna, I'm talking about the concept of convergence. Um, so convergence just means that with increasing numbers of guesses, you're getting back the same number. So if you've reached your goal, if you have, if all your guesses are kind of very, in, very, very close to your goal, then you should consider yourself to be done. So I'm going to start, I'm going to talk about an error tolerance. Let's say that it's a tenth of a percent. Um, I'm going to approximate that error based on how much my guess has changed. As a percentage of the previous guess. Like, let's just say that, um, <clears throat> say i is 10. Say we have done 10 guesses. The 11th guess, um, what we want, uh, you know, comes out of Newton's formula. And so what we want to know is how much has the value changed between the 11th and the 10th guess in a relative sense compared to, in this case, the 11th guess. And if that is less than 0.1%, then we can have our computer program stop. We, we can decide that that's good enough. Now, notice that this is also kind of a flawed way of doing things because this error is not a true measure of error because if you really knew the right answer, if you knew this goal value, then the error should be computed as in terms of how far you are from that value. The problem is you don't know that value or you wouldn't be doing this problem, right? So what you're in fact doing here is you're just guessing or you're approximating that the change in the guess is an indicator of how close you are to the correct answer. Um, so that is something that you should check. Uh, so that may be correct, but it may also be false. Um, so when you write a computer program to do Newton's method, it's important to check your answer um, and verify that it is in fact the answer you're looking for. In other words, um, you could evaluate the function value. And if it comes out to zero or close enough to zero to satisfy the problem you're trying to solve, 
um, then you know that you can stop the algorithm. Uh, so before I st um, end this video, I just want to repeat that Newton's method takes a function that is not necessarily linear and approximates it using the tangent line. By making a linear approximation, you can you can create a problem that is much easier to solve using the equation for a straight line, and the root of that straight line may not be the true root of your function, but it's probably closer to your answer than your initial guess. And so through repeated iterations, we converge on the right answer, hopefully. Not 100%, it depends on your function and your guess.